All right, man, let's talk about the NBA last night. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. Check out our NBA Talk playlist so you won't miss another NBA video. Um, or in case you miss them, yeah, Mr. Mason down here tonight, well, this morning with us. Um, about to mess up my mic. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let's talk about who started for Toronto last night. Uh, yeah, they might say they self and put themselves back into the series. Um... Kyle Lowry played amazing last night, played with a lot of confidence. It's just that, you know, they got to get Siakam to get up to Kyle Lowry level. Siakam was, Siakam was cool being the third or second, you know, guy last year behind Kawhi and Kyle Lowry. Um, and right now, Nick Nurse going to ride or die with him. You know, he brings some good uh, things on the defensive end. But offensively, they got to find him, get, get him in his groove. You know what I'm saying? And once again, if he can't get past Tatum and Brown, you know, you know, with his crossover, you know, they got to start featuring him in the post and he can post up, you know, he bigger and longer than the majority of their guards, you know, so he got to post up and get himself in the groove. They got to get him moving without the basketball and get easy cuts to the rim. You know, they got to get him going and there's ways to do that. And a lot of times these offenses don't no longer have no really good half court sets. And that's kind of been the theme of my videos, man, for guys like Paul George who can't get going and you know, other guys that struggled, you know, like Giannis, they got to start featuring them on the block and they got to get them moving without the basketball. When you pounding the ball and you driving and going one on five in the isolation situations, you know, in, in, in playoff basketball, things get more intense. They able to pack the paint and able to hone in on one guy. So now guys like Siakam, Giannis, you know, Paul George, they got to get the slash into the rim. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm telling you, when today's NBA is so focused on, you know, the guy with the ball, everybody looking at him because it's isolation basketball. Now, you know, you get those cuts to the rims or now you clear out and play, you know, two-man ball with pick and pop, pick and roll, or Kyle Lowry and, you know, Siakam in, in a high-low situation where hey, you throw it down to Siakam on a block, let them work. They bring a double team, swing it, you know, swing it to the other side of the court and get an easy three-pointer. So they got to get Siakam going, you know, basically posting up, working out the high post, and, you know, and clearing out the side and playing two-man game with him and Kyle Lowry. He can't just have a ball against th these good perimeter defenders, pound it, get to the paint because they're cutting him off and he's getting tough shots. Nick Nurse has to draw an offense up to, to get him going. But Kyle Lowry played amazing yesterday. You know, he had 10 points quick. And um, pretty much, you know, defensively what Toronto got to do is take away Jason Tatum. Other than Jason Tatum, you know, Kimball Walker is doing good out there, but he can't guard, guard Kyle Lowry one-on-one. And Walker seems not to be himself just yet. So, you know, if it's up to me, you know, I'm looking to take away Tatum. And if, you know, Jalen Brown been playing, you know, great, you know, Kimball Walker hit some shots, they had somebody else had to beat me. You know, even if Gordon Hayward was out there, you know, Marcus Smart just going to have to shoot me, shoot me out this series. You know, he ain't really a consistent three-point shooter like that. He just going to have to shoot me out. So, you know, Toronto played a good game last last night. It came down to the last shot. They put 7-8 with, with a... Kyle Lowry said a 7-12 seven, seven, motherfucker on me last, uh, at the end of the game to inbound the ball. And he did an amazing throw to uh, OG and Abaye. And he hit the shot, you know, and, you know, that's what you needed. And they played zone in that situation. And, you know, pretty much how you work the zone is, you know, bring it in half-court situations, ball movement is how you break the zone. Same thing, full-court press. Zone, I mean, you, hey, it's ball moving that break. You can't beat the press. You can't beat the zone. I played with a guy in middle school that, that he never played organized basketball. He could play. But he thought he can always split the 2-3 zone. He ended up getting uh, falling on the floor. You know, he ended up, you know, you know, throwing the ball away, you know, uh, taking stupid shots. You got to penetrate and kick or you got to have good ball moving. And one of the bad things about the zone is it, it, it opens up for the offensive rebounders, and this time it opened up for any uh, and Abaye to get an easy shot. You know, everybody was everybody focused was you know you know it was a two point game was focused to everybody on the right side of the court. You know, Kyle Lowry made a great throw. Jalen Brown rotated late, and that's the thing about the zone zone late in games. If fatigue makes a coward out of you, it's a bad thing to do because you got to rotate playing the zone. And if you don't rotate, you know that's the that's the difference. You know, and Abaye makes a good big three pointer and. They, they win. So now Toronto, they believe now. You know, Boston shot a really good game the first, first two games. But let's see, you know, if Toronto can win this game 
And if Toronto win the next game, they're going to put a lot of pressure on Toronto, uh, Boston moving forward. And you're going to see with Brown and Kimba Walker. Well, we know Kimba Walker about. He's a big-time player. He's been doing it since college. But you're going to see really how smart perform, how you know uh, Brown and Tatum perform. You're going to see how them, do, them dudes perform. But, you know, their weakness in, in Boston is in the middle. And right now, Toronto don't have a guy they could feature in the middle. Maybe five, six years ago, Paul, Marcus Saul could have did it. But they got to get uh, Pascal on the block, man. And maybe Pascal got to get stronger. You know, and they got to get him slashing to the bucket. You know what I'm saying? But today, you know, you talk about today's, you know, players, the, the coaches ain't that good today either. You know what I'm saying? They they don't run no sets for real. Only guys you're looking at, I know that run sets is Steve Kerr, Greg Popovich. You know, right now it's all isolation basketball in, 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 in the playoffs. It becomes half-court basketball. You got to be surgical. And teams that could be surgical in the half-court going to win. And that's why LeBron struggled a lot of time in his career, you know, playing the Spurs and losing to the Dallas. It's all about him having a ball, and there's no ball movement. You know what I'm saying? You got to have movement in playoff basketball. You got to have sets and run offenses. You can't just have one guy that's pounding the ball in, in the court. It don't really work like that, and people need to understand that. But um, you can move on. Um Oh, the Clippers got the Clippers annihilated Denver. Yesterday, Denver started off pretty good. But the problem is, these soft-ass big men. Yoki should have had 30 points and 10 rebounds for him last night. Plus, you know what I'm saying? He was supposed to kill uh, Zubac and kill Montrezl Hero. He didn't do his job. I mean, Paul Millsap got some, got some offensive rebounds. You know, if, you, if, you, if your big man ain't going to dominate the paint... Um, Versus the Clippers and, and, and the small Golden State Warriors, you know, versus the Houston Rockets. If your big man not going to dominate that paint, then you might as well go home. That's their best matchup with Millsap, Jeremy Grant, Jokic, Miles Plumlee, whichever Plumlee it is, is dominating that paint. And they got to dominate the paint in this series. Jokic can't be, you know, just a passer and a, you know, passive-aggressive type guy. He got to go out there and be aggressive, make moves, finish above the rim, you know, and they got to play through him. You know, Dan Murray get hot and get his open shots and stuff of that nature. But, you know, they might end up getting swept. I thought they'd be able to get one or two games. But the difference is, you know, not having Will Barton. And then, you know, Michael Porter Jr. can't really beat Will Barton because he's not used to coming off the bench. And right now he got to work on his defense. You know, that might be some more with his back and physically. But, you know, yesterday everybody played well for the Clippers. Basically, Kawhi was hella efficient. Paul George did what he had to do. Um... You know, and, and they and they look good. Everybody was hitting on all cylinders and you know, right now, you know, you know, Nuggets, they might have been a little bit tired yesterday, so that might be, you know, that might be they just played uh, what was it? Tuesday. So I mean that might not have been the real Nuggets, but Jokic gotta he gotta he gotta he gotta be more aggressive. He gotta score more in this series. Um, you know, high post, low post, he gotta score more and then, you know, Murray gotta step up and you know, Gary Harris got to find this stroke. It's going to be hard. He's been struggling all year, even before uh, he became healthy in the bubble. But, you know, the Clippers looking like they might, you know, the Clippers and Lakers looking like they might have easy work in the second round. I don't even see the Lakers losing to Houston, you know, unless Houston get hot one night, you know, unless, or unless, you know, James Harden got over some mental block by making that block on Dort. But um, personally, I, I just don't see them having problems. You know, their first round matchups are probably going to be tougher than their second round matchups. And, I thought the clip Denver would be good for two, but last night it showed me that, you know, Jokic just ain't aggressive enough. You know, these, these big dudes today, man, you know, you you know who you had in the first round with Houston? Like, Steven Adams played like a punk. You know what I'm saying? Like, how you got a 6'5 P.J. Tucker on you and you can't even score over the shoulder? You can't even, like, man, like, dude, you put Jermaine O'Neal out there, man. Jermaine O'Neal would probably be, the, like, the top five, three player in this era, man. Um, Jokic kind of remind me of Rasheed Wallace. Let me say that real quick. Rasheed Wallace could have went out there and averaged a walk in 30-12 every night. But Rasheed Wallace was a passive big man. Rasheed Wallace, great player, loved him as a Piston. When he played for my Pistons, check out my Piston channel, Mercy Sports Talk. Loved him in Portland. You know, I love Sheed wherever he went, right? But the problem with Sheed is she just never had a killer instinct. If she had, when she got mad, she she'd go dumb. But if she could play with that attitude, twenty four seven, three sixty five, 
she probably would have went down as one of the greatest big men National Basketball Association went through. And Jokic kind of remind me of that as well, too. He'd rather be a team player than the aggressor. And that's what made Shaq so so dominant. Shaq was like, man, Kobe, give me the ball. I'm going to slam dunk it every time. You know, and nobody really got that personality no more, man. But, hey, let me know what you got about the games yesterday. Check out our NBA Talk playlist. Don't forget to find us on, find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You also have a Facebook group, auto links in the description. If you need to reach out for a business question, a quiet response, if we just want to uh, chop it up, all my social media links in the description um, and a Facebook group link there as well, too. Want to make a donation, cash app, CJ Good 313 PayPal link in the description. Best way to donate is share the video, check out the NBA Talk playlist, hit the subscribe button, bell icon button, comment, and also check one of the channel out, Motor City Sports Talk, one time for the one time we go.